Hi there. I have almost a garden here on my desk today, haven't I? I just have one, two, three, four, five, six different kinds of flowers. You know what? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Flowers. You know, if you look out the window or even go outside, you look all around you and you'll see all sorts of things growing, whether they're trees or flowers in your garden or vegetables in the garden, whether they're weeds or grass, no matter what it is, all of those things that I just mentioned are plants. And most of them have some green on them, don't they? But did you know that all of these plants have flowers? They really do. Have you ever seen the flower of a tree, the flower of an elm tree, or the flower of an oak tree? You have to look very carefully sometimes for them, but very early in the spring before the leaves come out, if you look for them, you can find them. And some of them aren't as pretty as these flowers that are on my desk here, but they're flowers nonetheless. And you know, a flower is a very important part of a plant. Do you know why? Well, it's the flower's job to grow and not only be very pretty, so, well, we think they're pretty, and to afford entertainment for us by looking at them and smelling of them, but it's the duty of the flower to grow nice and big and produce seeds so that the next year the plant can grow again. And that's a very important job for this little flower to have, isn't it? I have a flower here that you've all seen, I'm sure. It's yellow, has a great big yellow head. Do you know what kind of a flower this is? It's a dandelion, that's right. Do you know why a dandelion, do you know where a dandelion got its name? Well, doesn't look much like a lion, does it? But let's look right here at the leaf of a dandelion. See how pointed and sharp looking the edges look? They're really not sharp, but see how jagged they are? They go in and out. It almost looks like the teeth of a lion, don't you think so? Well, that's what somebody thought a long time ago, that this leaf looked like the teeth of a lion, and so that's what they've called them ever since, dandelion. And something else that's very interesting about this dandelion, I'm going to pull out one of the little pieces of it here. I always thought that this much right here was the flower. Is that what you thought too? Well, you know, we were both fooled. Because if you take a little part and pull it out right here, this is one flower of a dandelion. Just this little tiny piece right here. It's not very big, is it? But it has all the parts that a flower needs. It has the pistils and its anthers and it makes its own seed. So there's one flower, and if we counted all the flowers in this head of a dandelion, well, I don't even know whether or not we could count that far, but there's one, and if I pull out a handful, there's about 10 right there. So here are 10 little tiny flowers. They're very tiny, aren't they? You know, when a dandelion first comes out, there might be six or seven or eight, sometimes nine or 10 of these great big composite flowers to one plant. And before they open up, this is what they look like. They're covered on the outside with the green sepals right here. And they look all green, but right on the tip we can see the yellow part. And then pretty soon they open up and they get nice and big just like this. And did you know that every night the dandelion wraps up in its little green covering like this before it goes to sleep? And then in the morning the green unfolds back and it looks like this again. Well, maybe the dandelion will stay like this flower right here, oh, two or three days, and then it folds itself up in its little green covering, and it looks like this for a while. Now, instead of being yellow, it turns white, because it's getting ready to open up again. Let's rip this back and see what it looks like on the inside. I'm going to take back some of the green covering here, See what's in there? All those little tiny flowers that were yellow that we talked about have now turned to white. And I'll pick one off and see if we can look at it here. Well, there are two of them right there, so two together are very, very small, aren't they? This is what it looks like on the inside. And these are the kind of dandelions that we pick when we're going to shoot them. You know, have you ever taken a dandelion when it's about this age right here, held it between your fingers and snapped it off just like that? and it just flies all over, and all you have left is the stem. But then after a few days, that opens up, and all the white inside 
turns into something like this. See? All these little things, it opened up, and they all stood right straight up on end. All those little white ones that we just got through looking at. And we call this an old man dandelion because he has a white head now instead of a yellow head. And it's lots and lots of fun to play with these. Because if the day is, if the day is very windy, the wind blows all of these little seeds off. But if it isn't windy, then we can take them up and we can blow on them and watch what happens. You see them fly away? Now there's a little hole over here in the side. And we can blow and blow and blow and see how many blows it takes us to blow all this white head off of the dandelion. But then each one of these little puffs, there's one right here with a seed hanging on the end of it. And it's just like a balloon has its own little balloon on every seed right here. Here's the little black seed right there. Can you see it? And then the wind takes this away and it drops it on the ground somewhere and it plants it all by itself. And I'll bet that that's one of the reasons why there are so many dandelions. Do you suppose? Sometimes they get so thick that we have to go out and dig them up or else they'll do harm to other plants, won't they? There go all these seeds. I hope they don't grow in here. Echo just flew and I think he wanted to look at the dandelion too. Did you see him fly away? He comes in every once in a while just to see what we're doing. We know some of these seeds now, we can see the seeds on the dandelion if we look at them very closely. But here is a part of a flower. Now all the petals have fallen off of this flower. The petals used to be right around here like this and it was a big pretty yellow one. But as it got older, of course, all the petals opened up and then they fell off and so I just cut this part and brought it in today and down in here are where all the new seeds are so I thought it might be kind of fun to cut one of these open and see if we could see these little tiny baby seeds should we do that all right I'm going to slice up part of it right there and then perhaps if we look very very closely we can see that there are Oh, just lots and lots of little tiny seeds all around in there. And if I take my knife and pick at them, I can lift a couple of them up. And I'll put them right down here on this dark paper. There are two of them. But all on the inside right here, where all these little seeds are kept, there are just probably hundreds of them. And then, as if I would have let this flower grow out in the garden as it got older, these seeds would have gotten just a little bit bigger, and they're awfully wet now. If I rub my finger across here, my finger gets wet. But then it, as it gets older, they would have dried out, and then after a while, this whole outside piece would have broken open all by itself, and that's how the little seeds would get out of there. When this opens up, then they just fall out. Well, now the dandelion seeds were carried away by the wind, and the seeds of this flower here opened up and the seeds popped out all by themselves and sometimes the birds carry the seeds and sometimes I know in the fall time if you've taken a hike in the woods or maybe even in the vacant lot by your house you come in and all over your shoes and on your shoestrings and on your socks you've had these sticker birds that are very very prickly aren't they we know those are the seeds of weeds and they hitch a ride on us and so that we're really the ones that that carry those seeds around. We carry them around on our shoelaces and perhaps they'll drop, drop off somewhere else. And then they replant themselves there and the next year there'll probably be a sticker bush there so you want to be careful when you're walking through. Well, let's look and see what other kind of flowers we have here now. Here's one that I always think are so much fun to look at because if you pretend just a little bit when you're looking at pansies, they almost look like people. Of course, it does take a little bit extra pretending. But we can pretend that the center of the pansy right there is a nose, and here is an eye, and there is an eye, and there's the mouth down there. The pansy has nice big flat petals on it because right down here, what we just call the nose of this little person's face, is where the nectar of this flower is kept. And it's kind of like honey, you know, and the bees like this nectar. And so when a bumblebee or a honeybee comes, it can sit right here on this nice broad leaf and just go right down in there and get all that nectar. Sometimes if you find a pansy, or if you 
know someone that has pansies growing, ask them whether or not they will give you one. You don't want to pick them without asking for them, though. But then spread it open like this, and right down there in that part that we call the nose, you look sometime, and you'll see a little man sitting in there, and this little man has a green hat on and a little brown um, scarf around his neck. And you just look for that little man sometime and see whether or not you can find him. Here's another pansy that looks just a little bit different, but they're both very pretty, aren't they? And they both look like they might just be faces. But then we have some other flowers over here. Oh, here's one that I, that I want to show you. I'll have to take it out of my vase. And this is a, a flower that we can have a lot of fun with, too. Do you know what kind of a flower that is? It's a pink one, by the way, but it's called a snapdragon. And there are a lot of separate flowers on this blue. And I'm going to break one off right here and show it to you. And maybe then you'll understand why it's called a snapdragon. Watch. When I pinch the corners right here, watch what happens. It looks like this one is going to snap. Let's try another one and see whether it'll snap. Here. There. See what happens? The flower opens up and we can see right inside it like that. We can see all the parts right in this little flower and we pinch the side. It snaps and snaps and snaps and that's why we call them snap dragons. We can have a lot of fun pretending that these are real animals and they walk up and they go snap, snap, snap. And here is a plant. This is a marigold. And we can see a lot of different things about this plant. We can't see the seed, but we know that since it's in a pot here, that the seed started down here in the dirt. But look what's down here on the bottom. Can you see this little root that's hanging out right here? There is one there. All the roots are down underneath the ground now. And that's where the plant gets its food and water, through the roots. And here's one that's come right out through a little hole in the bottom of the pot. And then the stem has come up out of the ground, and the leaves have come out, and here is the flower of the marigold. Isn't it pretty? It's bright yellow with some very dark red markings in the very center of it. There are other flowers, too, that don't grow particularly well in our gardens. And this is one of these flowers. This is a carnation. And I'm going to put it in this glass of ink right here. And then tomorrow, I'm going to see whether or not this carnation has changed color. It just might do that, you know, because it gets its food through the stem. And if the ink goes up through the stem, perhaps it will come out into the leaves. Do you suppose it will? Well, I'm going to put it in this glass of ink. And I'm going to leave it there all night tonight. And then I'm going to see tomorrow whether or not the carnation has changed color. Well, I hope that that you've learned some things looking at the flowers and talking about them today, and I hope you really enjoyed talking about them.